the citizenry is a very well educated citizenry. Um, but the responsibility is you know who you're voting for, you not you know why you're voting for them, and you actually bother to vote. Mm -hmm. What we've seen as news has fragmented, um, and as politics has has not seemed to improve very much mm -hmm. in this in this town and in the state, the people have given up on some level. Mm -hmm. Take that together with the way we shop for news now. If I want to go on the internet, I'll look for what I think I want. Maybe I'll want a little bit of news, I want the weather, I might check the sports, I might look at my horoscope. But really the definition of news is when you get something that you didn't know how to ask for. And that's the part where we are more challenged in every newsroom in this town in finding a way to engage people who might not know how to ask or occur to them to ask for a certain kind of story. Well, students, and I talk to a lot of them, and, and they have a perception that old media is not trustworthy and that new media is where it's at. I'm here to tell them right now that both can be equally untrustworthy. Uh, I'm as disturbed or maybe even more disturbed by some of new media's no rules to the road. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, is a problem. Um, but so-called old media needs to find a way to connect with those students in meaningful ways so that you say, hey, look, this is a story. This is an idea. Um, I think for all of us, you look at your email inbox, I look at mine. Mm -hmm. Chances are you have more than one email inbox. <laughs> we have too much coming in and maybe not enough thoughtful material going out. And again, I search for these answers just the way students do, just the way everyone else does in terms of my information. I mean, part of it is I don't think there's an experience level. I think they are at a certain age and stage where new media is their first media, the first place they ever went. And so to some degree, we at the Sun-Times and NBC where I work have to almost reintroduce ourselves to a younger population that is accustomed to seeing whatever they're reading in the palm of their hand. And so uh, for us, it's a matter of translation. We know the language of news, but the dialect has changed. The benefits of journalism, it's, it's a little bit like, uh, as I compare it to joining a debate team. It is a way to think. It's a way to look at things. Um, there isn't just one track to examine a story. And there aren't just two sides to any story. There are probably 10 or 20. And so it is a different way of thinking. If you want to talk about multi-platforming, mm -hmm. any journalist has been using multiple platforms simply in trying to explore any given subject at any given time. I think it is an enormous discipline, whether you stay or whether you go into something else afterward. I think it is an enormous tool. I would go into journalism today looking at the environment. I have never, ever fallen out of love with journalism. I may fall out of love from time to time with this trend or that trend. Mm -hmm. But but the truth is that I love this business and I learn something new every day. Part, I think it starts in grammar school. And part of what we've seen in school cutbacks is um, a de-emphasis on what we used to call civics. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need, one, a sexier name for it. But two, I think we need to start engaging kids at a very early level in the excitement of politics. You know, I'm not so jaded, despite this being <laughs> Illinois, and despite the two of the governors that served here are right now in prison. Um, I'm not so jaded as to believe that there isn't a kind of passion and fire and excitement at a neighborhood level. Um, you know, the Mikva Challenge has done a wonderful job of taking young people, slightly older age, but and, and having them be election judges or poll watchers. You know, put somebody into that maelstrom. Put them at a campaign rally. Put them on the campaign trail. And I think you see something different than you imagined politics is. I, you know, just that I pray that people keep reading and being interested. I'm always amazed at, you know, we talk about how people aren't part of it and don't care and that you get into a cab in the city of Chicago and I will tell you that Five out of six cab drivers want to talk about world issues, local issues. They can they can recite the names of the people who are writing for the papers and who are on TV. Um, there is engagement 
all across the spectrum, we sometimes worry that there's not enough, but I'm excited at what there is.